Hey you guys, welcome back to Lisa and Company or welcome if you're new here. Either way, I really hope you guys have hit that subscribe button. I am super excited for today and I'm going to tell you about it a little later in the video. In the meantime, why don't we get started? So first up today, this should have almost been more like a crafting my stash video. I have had this for well over a year. You can see it's meant to be some kind of Christmas calendar. It was $24 when whoever bought this bought this and I scored it at the thrift store for $3. 50. Super excited. I have had so many ideas on how I wanted to make this over and I am so excited to finally be getting to it. So I did a little test spot here because this is MDF not wood and I wanted to use my fusion stain and finishing oil in driftwood and I had no idea how that would react on MDF. Well, I was pleasantly surprised, so I went ahead and covered the entire thing. And I put it on and wiped it off just like you would regular stain. So you guys, one of the things I didn't consider was how long it was going to take me to paint all these pieces. So guess what? I headed out to my living room rather than record this in the studio so I could hang out, watch some Netflix and get seriously covered in paint. I ended up sanding, painting twice, then sanding again every single one of these. Then. The next morning I went and slid this right back in and this is why I like to use fake stain, not real stain, because it was still wet. So I'm going to have to wait till this dries, sand it a little bit and then redo it. Now I have these really cool stamps and I thought that would be the easiest way to do all the numbers and letters and sayings that I wanted to do for this because I'm not actually making it a calendar. I haven't used these before and I couldn't find my stamp pad anywhere but i'm pretty sure it was jessica lynn i just saw do this with a sharpie and i thought what the heck well first time didn't work second time with the tape didn't work third time yeah so done with these blocks and i dug out my cricut and my vinyl and i went that route now here's the deal I haven't used my Cricut for like six months. I know it's really sad, but I've had so much fun with the Dollar Tree rub-on transfers and stickers and all kinds of great stuff that I really wasn't using it. Here's what I forgot. Fine fonts done in a small size are a super pain to weed and put down. I made it work. I was a little frustrated. It got better as I went because it kind of all comes back to you as you go. So I thought it would be fun to do Days Until Valentine's even though we're almost there. And then I did a couple of other ones as well. Now I had this really cute little tiny mini wreath slash candle ring. And I thought that would be perfect right on top. I was convinced I had a wooden letter V somewhere that I was going to attach as well. But if you saw my studio, you would understand why I couldn't find it. So I went ahead and put this on and I was really happy with the result. And ultimately, that's what counts. So after I styled it for Valentine's Day, I went ahead and did this. Let's see if you catch my error. So today is, is a great day, is it? What many of you probably don't know is that in my part of Canada and some others for that matter, we celebrate family day, usually very close to Valentine's Day. It's on a Monday in February and the whole idea is to have the day off work, spend time with your family and really, I think our lives are so busy and so hectic that it's just a great reminder about how important family is. So that's why all of these DIYs I created for this video are all about family and home. I really hope you're enjoying them so far. 
This is yet another piece that I've had sitting in my stash for a long time. I actually think I bought it at Easter last year at Dollarama. And I think the reason I didn't do anything with it was I couldn't decide how I wanted to treat this. So with the sign, these really cute little spring flowers from Dollarama and the faux leather ribbon, we're gonna turn this into a fun family DIY. Now I made some fake stain this time and I did adjust it a couple of times and I used a tiny little brush to make sure I got it right down in those family, then used the same stain to do the frame. Now I was nice and sloppy when I did this and I'm gonna go in and make it look beautiful once the stain, fake stain, is dry. So I'm gonna use my white Rust-Oleum chalked paint and I have this teeny tiny, and I mean teeny tiny little brush, and I'm going to work my way around the edge to cut it in, and then go in between the letters to make sure that it's not super sloppy when I'm done. I cannot even begin to tell you just how tedious this was. I ended up not filming the entire thing because watching me painstakingly paint this would have been painful for you. And you guys, I love and appreciate you. I wouldn't do that to you. Once it was done, I filled in all the white paint. I did give it a little bit of sanding because I found that was drying as I went and leaving a little more texture than I wanted. Now I cut a long length of the faux leather ribbon and I'm cutting it in half because the inside's not so pretty. So I'm going to glue it wrong sides together and create a really nice hanging strap for this sign. I'm gonna use my glue gun. Now, in case you haven't noticed, this is a brand new glue gun. It's the Tiny Shore Bonder. I know there's probably a number or a name, but it's got a really fine tip on it and Izzy bought it for me for Christmas and I, Honestly, it is one of my favorite Christmas presents. It doesn't take a lot to impress a DIYer. So I just kept, went nice and slowly and pressed them together as I went and I did it in small sections so my hot glue wouldn't have a chance to dry or start drying and get all lumpy and bumpy. Once that was done, I trimmed the ends just with a point. I thought they would look a little bit more authentic that way and then I used some hot glue and attached them to the sign. Why don't you guys head down into the comments and tell me what you love to do for family activities. Are you a board game kind of family or are you kind of a sit and chill and watch a movie kind of family? Once that was attached, I liked it even better than I thought I would. The only thing I would add here, and again, <clears throat> I couldn't find, was I have a couple of upholstery tacks somewhere that I wanna put on there. Now, Putting the florals on the bottom, this was my dilemma. I didn't want a bow on this, but I didn't want my glue to show. So I just kept working my way in with smaller and smaller pieces, and I love the way this came out. I have had so much fun with the Dollar Tree MDF letters, and I bought a lot, but I wish I'd bought more because they are pretty much gone. So you can probably guess fairly quickly what I'm doing with this. I have this neat old, it's not a chopping board, it was just a decorative piece. I picked it up at the ReStore for a couple of dollars again like last winter, I think this is pre-pandemic, I did give it a light sanding to scuff it up. It had a really heavy coat of varnish on there and then two coats of the aged gray Rust-Oleum chalked paint. Now I'm gonna get these letters painted. I told you I loved them. Here's what I don't love. I don't love painting them, especially like the H and the E. Well, the M in this case as well. There is just so many nooks and crannies on these letters that A, I got covered in paint, B, I had to do it in several steps, and C, yeah, I still love these letters. Don't worry about it. Once they were finished, I had another treatment I wanted to do with these. I didn't want to distress them per se, so I had some of that fake stain left over from the family sign, and I decided if I put a little bit of that on, it would match the frame of that little house that I'm using as part of this. So I sped this up so you guys don't have to watch it for the next 20 minutes, but I just kept putting on the stain and rubbing it off and putting it on and rubbing it off. And if I got a little bit too much, I just waited a couple of minutes and then sanded it back a little bit. So 
here's the other part sanding these is a super nuisance i was using an old dollar tree sanding block i should have just used a little bit of sandpaper it would have been way easier so there you go word to the wise if you have to sand letters or letters like this just use a piece of sanding paper You guys, today is a super exciting day for me. As I am sitting here working on this video for you, I am just a few subscribers away from 10,000 and I can't tell you how excited I am. Do me a favor, help me get there, reach this milestone, hit that subscribe button, and of course the notification bell so you know every time I upload a video, I am, there aren't even words to describe how excited I am. It's been a little while coming. We've been at this for about ooh, 18 months now, and I'm so excited we're finally here. I'm gonna take apart this cute little house-shaped frame from Dollar Tree and use this paper I printed off just to pop it in the back. Now, I don't know if you guys caught this, but I did as I was working my way through the editing here. Do you like the meh, the way those letters are sitting? This video is not meh. I hope you are enjoying it and I hope you don't think it's meh, okay. I'm, I'm stuck, I'm in a vicious loop here. I did get this line apart, it came apart beautifully. It was a little more work to get the little cactus out than I expected. I'm going to use the clean side of this, but I wanna get off that home so it looks good from the back. Super simple. I'm gonna go ahead and stick this down. Now, usually I just use my glue stick and I don't know what I was thinking, but I went ahead and used my Mod Podge. Came out great, no bubbles. I'm loving the new technique I've been using here. And that is I put it on really, really thin and very even. I think that's the key. I try to make sure that there's no ridges or anything like that in the glue. So press it down, I trimmed it out and say it with me, use your Dollar Tree sanding block to get a beautiful edge. You guys, I can't imagine doing this any other way. I love the way it comes out. When I was finished sanding that off, I did go back and put a top coat of the Mod Podge on it. The paper was really shiny from the printer and I wanted to tone it down a bit and I figured this would do the trick as well as seal it off. One more light sand for the guys, just to make sure there was no paint ridges or anything like that. And this is a super old sanding sponge. I keep around just for this because I find it's so worn out. It just, it's just enough. I'm not looking to take off a layer of anything. It almost polishes it up. Maybe that's what I was trying to tell you. Time to put this all together and it is so similar to the love sign I made for Valentine's Day in a previous video. Now I have pulled my camera back as far as I can so that you can see what's going on here without actually seeing just how frightening the studio is. So of course I'm just going to use a little bit of E6000 as well as a tiny bit of hot glue to get it held right away while the E6000 sets up. Now, somehow I lost a little bit of footage here. I think I hit stop instead of record and whatever. I made a really tiny little wreath for that house-shaped sign out of the Dollar Tree Pip Berries. You guys have seen me use those all kinds of ways, especially lately. And I just wound it together about three times to make a really cute little wreath for that. I don't think this could have come out 
any better. Well, that's a wrap on my family day video. I really hope you guys enjoyed these as much as I enjoyed making them. These are without a doubt some really versatile DIYs. I'm gonna enjoy having these up in the house all year. I can see them kind of moving around from spot to spot to spot. Okay, so if I haven't asked you enough and if I haven't explained why I'm excited enough, please, please, please go down below and hit that subscribe button. I am so excited by your responses. I am so excited to see the channel growing so well right now. So help me out, hit that subscribe button and of course the notification bell so you know every time we upload a video. We'll see you next time, guys, and as always, thank you so much for stopping by Lisa and Company. All right, you guys, we are done for today. Make sure you check out these other videos. And like I always tell you, follow me over on Instagram and Facebook at Lisa and Company so you don't miss any of the other weird stuff we share, like my crazy painted fingers from the other night.